So have you ever wondered exactly what your hips should be doing in the dowsing? Well, there's three really key movements. We're gonna explain what they are and give you three drills to help you improve that. So many of you will be aware that we should start the dowsing from the ground up. You know, we start to use our lower body before we start to use our upper body. And part of that lower body is the hip movement. So if we can start to work on your hips and get them to move better, a little bit more like what we see the best players do, you're gonna see that in ball flight and strike and distance and all of those kind of things. Now, for me, in, certainly in this video, we're gonna cover three different movements. And these three movements are present in almost all goal sings. We've got a forward and down movement, we've got a rotational movement, and we've got an upward movement. And we're gonna break those down, run them through, and each one, we're gonna share with you a pretty simple drill to help you do that. First drill is the transition. What do the hips do as you transition from the back swing to the down swing? I'm not gonna say that this is the most important part, but if you get this wrong, the other two almost become impossible to do. So this one really has to, we have to get off onto the right start. So let's take an alignment stick, let's place it through the belt loops, and that is going to give me a pretty decent visual representation of what my hips are doing. Grab myself a golf club. So when I make my backswing, we're not really gonna cover that too much in this video, but we have some rotation, and that rotation, due to my setup, is on an angle, so we see the hips at an angle. So when we look from the front view, we should see the lead hip, which is my left hip, lower than my trail hip. That's at the top of the back swing. Now, the key move here, and this is move number one, is in the transition, we want your hips to be moving towards the target, but I want you to be keeping that lead hip lower than that trail hip, as you can see that there. So, we achieve a nice back swing, lead hip is lower, but we start to move towards the target, but we keep that left hip lower than that trail hip. Not what we always see. Terms like bumping the hips forwards or pushing the hips forwards are often not great for golfers to have in their mind because they can get you a little bit unstuck. What often happens is, and we hear this all the time, is that we are aware that we should start with the lower body, but what happens is we get to the top and golfers have been told to bump their hips. And what happens? They do this. And that's a very, very different move. You'll see what's happened that this lead side of the alignment stick, my left hip has gone forward, yes, but it's gone upwards. And what that does is even though the feeling or the sensation is forward towards the target, it actually pushes your head and your upper body back and you end up with far too much weight on this trail side. One, when that left hip goes upwards, you'll see as we progress through this video and we come on to point number three, that makes point number three almost impossible to do. And that's why we said a moment ago that this is so important, this transitional phase. So, great little exercise is something like this, an alignment stick through your belt loops, opposite a reflection, a mirror, even just your phone with a camera facing you, up to the top, lead hip lower, and as you start down, I'm putting pressure into that lead side, I really feel that force under that leg, but this is staying lower than this side. That is absolutely key. And what we're doing there is we're putting pressure onto that lead side and we are slightly lowering the hips. That is our first move. And that one is absolutely key that we get right. So our second movement, again, we're gonna use the alignment stick still through the belt loops. And we're now talking about rotation. Rotation in the hips towards the target. Again, such an important part of the golf swing. All the best golfers out there have good amounts of rotation. Again, it's not what we often see in the amateurs who struggle. Now, this isn't simply a case of just trying to get you to rotate your hips because when that happens, and you might have experienced this in your practice, if the focus is simply on to rotate the hips and get them what we call more open, it's really common for that golfer to start to then swing way over the top this way and the golf club starts to come crashing down on the golf ball and you know we might achieve a better rotation through the hips but it's at the expense of you know the club coming across the golf ball and often we, we lose strikes um, and it becomes almost worse as a result. So we have to do this in a, in a certain way. You'll notice that I've got a couple of things set up here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this head cover and this may seem like a little bit of a, you know, complicated setup, but it, it is absolutely essential that you do it this way because we need to guard against those things that we see happening all too often. I've got that head cover in such a place that my golf club can really only approach the ball from a very neutral place. It, certainly can't get to the golf ball from out to in because that head cover's in the way. And then when I address that golf ball, you'll notice that, you know, probably around about some 
eight to 12 inches in front of my trail side, I've got an alignment stick. And it's again, probably some eight to 12 inches behind my heels. I've just got that into the ground. Now, the golfers who don't rotate their hips would often get very much this way at impact, very square on here, body stands up, everything breaks down at impact. What I'd love you to try and do, and you can do this without the golf club to begin with, is as you achieve impact, so when the club strikes the ball, you'll notice, hopefully you can hear that, that the alignment stick on my legs is in contact with the one that's behind me. The only way I can do that is obviously by rotating this midsection. Why the heck over there? Well, what I'd love you to do is actually just rehearse from the top to impact, getting this alignment stick to make contact with this alignment stick and missing the head cover. Sounds easy, it's not. It's a little bit like patting your head around your tummy because there's a lot of things going on here. But what this is really going to encourage you to do is actually use the lower body as we want it. So we start, it lowers, and then it rotates. But you'll notice that my golf club came into the golf ball on the path that we want. So I've got this around here on this alignment stick, and I've got my golf club being delivered on the right path. The key thing when we're opening the hips is we don't necessarily want the shoulders to follow. The golfers who struggle, if you look at the club on my shoulders versus the club on my hips, it's when as the hips open, the shoulders follow. Those are the golfers who start to get very much out to win. Watch as I do this correctly, you'll see that as my hips start to open, my shoulders don't follow at the same rate. That's really important because it's that that allows us to rotate the hips well, but still deliver the golf club from the neutral path. And for many golfers who have ever tried to just get the hips open, this is the biggest sticking point they have, that they often try and get the hips open, but it just makes far, things far worse down the impact and they start to hit huge big slices or they start to misstrike it. So just this little setup, and notice I've not hit a ball yet because we don't need to at this stage. You're just looking to train a movement where I'm trying to open the hips and deliver the golf club on a neutral path. Absolutely, you can hit shots on there. I'll do a little demonstration. This ball will potentially go into that water, but we're going to hopefully see that alignment stick move, but me not hit the head cover behind it. Okay, didn't hit the head cover. It's only gone 50 to 60 yards. It's actually short of the water, which is a bonus for me. I get to keep that ball. But that's a great little practice station for me to work on rotation, but guarding against many of the things that happen when you do start to work on rotation. And for movement number three, just so it doesn't feel left out, we're gonna use the alignment stick again. So we're gonna use that for all three of these little exercises. And this one is a vertical movement, a push away from the ground. What we'll often see in the great golfers is if we could, I mean, we can just use the belt line as an example, but obviously we're looking at the hips more specifically. Wherever that belt line is set up, at impact, it would often be slightly higher. And that doesn't mean that the, oh, the golfers got higher, the head often isn't any higher than it was in the dress, but what they're doing is they're starting to use their lower body and their legs and they're pushing up and away as they complete that rotation. So like we said right back at the start, there is a forward and down movement, there is a rotational movement, and then there is a vertical push movement. And we're gonna work very much on that rotational push. Now, why is this really important? Well, I'm gonna link a video here, which I did uh, not too long ago about how we add speed to the golf club. And it's a great little experiment. If you haven't seen that, I'd love you to go and watch it. That video will make this make a lot more sense because this movement here is really key to adding speed to the golf club and causing that club to kick out with a little bit more speed. Alignment stick into the ground, angled, as you can see, and I'm gonna take my address and that grip is gonna be roughly where I would hold the golf club. So I'm just gonna grip it as, as I would normally. Now, for me to get that stick out the ground, I need to have a little bit of force, but which way is that force got to be? Well, it's got to be sort of in that direction where the alignment stick is angled in. Now, I certainly could do that with just my arms, and instinctively, that's what many golfers do. What I would love you to do is try from here to get yourself into a complete follow-through position, but doing that and pull the stick out the ground with as much force as you can. But I want that force to come from the legs. Now, what you'll often notice if I try and do this for you is it will cause you to feel like you have to squat a little bit. And then as you rotate the finish, you'll have to push up as you rotate the finish because it's that push up that's gonna pull the stick out the ground. I absolutely love this drill. 
this drill is not going to change your goal sync. Doing this five minutes a day for three months won't change your goal sync. What it does is it opens your eyes and it's almost that like kind of eureka light bulb moment to say, okay, that's what the hip should be doing. It's a great exercise for many golfers to kind of for the first time feel what speed and energy from the legs is really like. And once you know what it feels like, as soon as you put the golf club in your hands, you've got something you can try and work towards. So, you know, don't be under the illusion that this is gonna fix your goal sync. This is just to, I call it kind of taking the blanket off, revealing what the right movement is. So let me show you. So taking a, a grip here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through to my finished position, but pull the stick out of the ground with as much force as I can. Okay, and hopefully you can see that I did that. I had to make this upward movement because that was what was pulling the stick out the ground. Focusing on finishing in my end position added the rotation. And so on that movement there, I had rotation, which we've talked about, and we had that vertical movement up and away from the golf ball. Really, really key elements to the dowsing. Right back at the start, we mentioned how that first point was really key and instrumental to making all the other points achievable. Really hard to do numbers you know, two and three, as we said, if we're not doing that first one correct. We have to move correctly in transition to enable us to make those movements. So if you can work on good hip movement, you will be able to achieve many of the things that you're trying to do in your goal sing. Right, let's see if I can put that all together. Uh, let's see if I can get this ball probably onto the middle of that green. I'm not sure I'm gonna go for that flag tucked on that right-hand side. Actually, uh, a little bit closer to the flag than I intended. But a pretty good shot, and I'm happy with that. So, get your hips working better. Not easy, but three little exercises and drills there to help you feel it, help you see it, and help you work on it. Thanks for watching, usual stuff down below, comments box down there, like button, all that kind of stuff. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love you to. It's absolutely free, and I really believe these videos can help you play some better golf. Thanks for watching.